Hello everybody and first of all I want to say thanks for watching, really appreciate it. Uh, it's been a while since I made any videos. Uh, it's also been a while since I made any bull whips which is why I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone and make a video on me making a bull whip. Um, I have made quite a few before and there are going to be links down in the description to a couple of the ones I did before like some videos from the past. It was a very cheap homemade one using uh, what was it, um, like masking tape, um, some rope and like chain from like a bath plug or something like that. Um, cost about 10-15 pounds in total. Um, it was actually pretty decent for a real budget whip but um, yeah give that one a try it was quite an easy one to do. And then um, I've also got a video for a power cord one I did, black and neon green looking thing. Um, looked pretty cool, worked really well, it's one of the first proper um, nylon whips I made. Uh, but yeah, check that one out. Anyway, uh, so enough of me waffling on. Um, I will now show you the stuff we're going to need to make a bull whip, which is not a lot. First thing is, tape measure. You need to measure out your power cord that you're going to be using to make this nylon bull whip. Uh, some electrical tape. You need a lighter. Let's check that works. Yep. Um, a knife. Make sure it's nice and sharp. Do not cut your fingers. Uh, for the handle, you can use just a quarter inch uh, bar, just a steel bar or something, and just cut down length. Uh, but I've got these um, like temp pegs. Got these from a hardware store. They're about 10 inches long, so. That'll be just right and uh, nice little end on there. It'll make it nice and easy to uh, put the power cord up to the handle. Have a nice little metal finish on the end. And you need some BBs. These are just regular old steel BBs, nothing special. They're going to be what's in the belly to like, load it or uh, give it some weight behind it. Uh, most importantly, uh, some power cord. This is obviously not all the power cord I'm going to need. This is just an off cut I've got left over from the previous one. Um, for anybody wondering what paracord is, it's basically just um, nylon rope really. Um, it's got seven strands on the inside, uh, makes it super strong the way it's, um, I guess the way the, the strands are woven together. Uh, it's got 550 pound breaking strain, hence the name paracord 550. Um, now I was going to do just a simple black paracord bull whip today, but when I ordered the, the paracord I wasn't really paying attention I guess. And yesterday when it turned up, uh, this is the colour I got. It is, uh, I think it was like aqua marine or something like that. Doesn't actually say on the on the packaging. Um, but yeah, you can see that is going to be um, quite a bright whip. Now I have got some black left over. I've got maybe about 100 foot left over, which isn't enough to do a six foot ball whip. Need a couple hundred foot probably. Um, so I'll use the black on the inside and do this on the outside. Just so I figured, hey, why not? Let's make it a nice bright colour for one, try to brighten things up at the moment, because as we all know, we're on lockdown. Um, we could all do with some cheering up. Um, actually, let me just show you. Uh, I don't know if anyone can actually really see that. Let me get closer and focus. Ooh, there we go. So, uh, yeah, this comes in 100 foot sections. I bought two of these, like I said, with the other stuff I've got left over, I'll have enough. Uh, if we look right around about here, I'm doing terrible with the focusing right here. I turned off the autofocus because uh, the lens was quite noisy. Um, so the first thing, all weather, you know, pretty good, you can use it outside, I'm not going to damage it or do any harm to it. Uh, 550 pound test, uh, obviously that's the braking strain, UV resistant, ties well and there it is with the uh, seven strand core. Um, yeah, heavy duty stuff. And let's focus. Alright, anyway, that's enough of me waffling on. Um, I'm going to start cutting down my lengths of uh, paracord to start making this. Um, first thing you're going to want to need. Uh, first thing you're going to need is five and a half foot of cord to make the the inner layer, the very the very first layer, which is going to go out through pretty much the majority of the length of the whip. Um, it's also what you're going to be putting your BBs inside. So uh, let's get cutting and um, I will show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so now we've got our 
five and a half foot length of cord. Um, here you can see all the the strands. I'm trying not to get too close so it goes blurry. With all the strands sticking out. What we want to do is just pull all of these out. Just run your hand down the the outer layer. It'll kind of like bunch up as you're pulling them out. Um, in throw them away, you don't really need these for this project, but um, I keep them sometimes just for just for handy bits of string or whatever to tie stuff up. Um, anyway, so the next thing you want to do is take the steel bar or the temp bag or whatever you're going to be using for your handle. Uh, if you are using just a normal bit of round bar, uh, you're going to want to file the edge down a bit um, just so that mainly you can get this onto this. Uh, and all you're gonna do is just like poke it around a little bit in there and get the get the cord onto the end of it nice and snug and we're gonna tape it on. Uh, what we're gonna do after that is basically fill halfway with these. Now this is a very tedious part of the project. Uh, is just basically one by one. I don't know how many is gonna go in there, maybe I'm gonna say 70 odd. 80 maybe I'll count them up as I put them in. I'll try to try to count them. And um, yeah, that is basically all it is. Um, if you got like a little funnel or something, you could put them in to go in there. I mean, that might make it a bit easier. I've never done it before, but uh, just like sp spread the the end out a little bit, just so it's easier to put them in. I'll just show you one just before I uh, before I tape it onto the actual handle itself. Mm more than one there so literally all you're going to do well, I will try to get this a bit closer let's adjust this that's better so get one little BB we drop it in now it's not just going to fall in because that would be way too easy but just push it in pinch it down there, and then just run it down and then we'll basically we'll do that all the way through Sorry about the focusing on this, I'm absolutely terrible, I know. Basically, so when we've got this end uh, firmly attached on here with some electrical tape, and um, we will basically push that all the way up to there, and we want, like I say, half the length of this filled with BBs, like back to back, you know, wedged up against each other, you know, no little gaps between them. So I'm gonna get started on that, and I will come back to you in just a second. Okay, so, here is the uh, cord attached onto the temp peg that I'm using. Um, don't need to use a huge amount of tape. You know, just make sure it's on this snug. You don't want to wrap around like a hundred times, making sure it's secure because uh, well, it's going to have other layers over the top of it. And that, yeah, you know, but just that's enough electrical tape. It's not going to. It's not going to come off. I could pull that. It's not going to go anywhere. Plus, if you have too much around it, you're going to end up with a bulge. And then as you put your layers over the top of it, you'll still see that bulge as you go on. Um, but I've already put like about 20 BBs in there. I think I may have underestimated the uh, 70 or 80 odd. <laughs> so um, that's how I'll, I'll keep track of it and I'll, uh, I'll let you know how many it actually took me to do. Uh, another thing I did to mark the middle point, which I've now actually can't see where I put my mark. Um, uh, is actually right here. You're not really going to be able to see it on the camera very well because it's faded already, but I put a, just a little chalk mark on there just so I knew roughly where to um, where to fill them up to. Uh, I'll actually redo chalk mark. One of my daughter's chalks. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's just a just a nice easy way of marking the, the halfway mark where we're going to fill our BBs up to. You could put a little bit of tape around it, I guess, but you'd have to make sure it's quite loose because uh, otherwise when you try to put the BBs through it's not going to be easy and for the end where the BBs are going in I said I um, spread the the ends out a bit but then they were fraying quite badly so what I do sometimes is literally just just get a lighter and just like singe the ends a little bit now it is obviously nylon which is basically plastic really um, so when you do that it is going to be like sticky and very hot so if you touch it like that it is gonna you know probably burn or get stuck to your finger so if you 
careful with it you can just like pat it down and spread it out a little bit and that'll just stop the ends from fraying too much more while you're trying to put the bb's in once we're done we can just cut the the roughness off of that and then we'll melt it properly to seal it you know we'll tidy it up afterwards so at the moment if it gets too messed up it's not really a not really a big deal because we can fix that uh, but anyway i'm going to get back to uh putting these bb's in and i will come back to you once i've got to the halfway point okay so that is all of the bb's in that i need to put in um severely underestimated how many it was going to be it wasn't 70 to 80 it's actually 146 i put inside this one well i say it was 146 i got 146 and i thought you know what i'll put the extra four and make it a nice round 150 so that is what we've got um basically what you want to make sure though is just go down i would start at the handle and just push them down a little extra more because as you've been moving it in and out up and down quite a lot while you've been pushing the others in this lot could have like worked their way away from the handle just a smidge so just go down i've already done it keep it in a straight line and just make sure they're packed in all the way as far as you can mm -hmm. then what we're going to do is this part here where the last bb is we are going to use some of the uh, some of the innards some of the the strands well just one of the strands really just need a couple of foot of it and i'm going to basically tie it around the cord here where the last bb is i wrap around it and uh, tie in a good knot make sure basically that that can't go any further because you're going to be cracking the whip and the idea with these bbs is that this is going to give it some extra weight and mass behind the crack like every time you you know you swing it around and go whoosh, like that terrible sound effect there I know um, every time you crack it these are going to have a lot of force pushing them all away from the handle so you need something to really stop it and make sure that you know the inside you know the very inner layer of your whip isn't gonna isn't gonna go anywhere basically so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and tie this off and then uh, I'll show you what it should look like okay so now that I've uh, bound the end up you can see where the, the BBs are here and there is the big old knot and binding of the inside layer of the cord. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just put a little bit of tape around it, a little bit of the electrical tape, pull nice and tight on it to you know, get it on there real good. Don't like, again, don't wound around the same part too much. You don't want a big bulge in it, especially on like, you know, this part of the, the whip. I mean, the handle is one thing, but doing it inside uh, the part of the whip itself, you're going to get a big bulge and it's just going to, it's going to hinder the performance of the whip. Okay, so, now that I've got the uh, middle section taped up there, uh, basically what we're going to need to do next is go over the whole length of this with some electrical tape. It's where the trusty vice is going to come in handy, so if you've got one this is going to make life a little bit easier. I um, just want to point this out while I'm talking. Subscribe, you know, be nice, thank you. Um, Basically, yeah, we're gonna just pop this in the vise, start taping around the handle, and then we'll we'll just move it up and basically we're gonna tape along the whole thing, leaving about a foot at the end without tape. Um, so it's literally just a case of pop that in there. Don't squeeze it too much. You know, you don't need to overly really tighten it. And literally, you just start at the top. Maybe a little bit tighter than that. Okay, once you've got it started, go at a slight angle and just go around the whole length of it. I'm just going to move this up a little, like that. Okay, just literally go down round keeping it nice and tight electrical tapes a little bit uh, a little bit stretchy you know so you can uh, pull it a little bit tighter try not to get any bits where it like folds and creases over if you do notice it just go back on itself a little bit it'll come off and then just whiz around the whole the whole handle over the transition and like I say leave about a foot at the end and then I'll go ahead and do that and I'll show you what it looks like in just a second.
Okay, so this is what the finished core should look like. Um, so I've got from the handle, bound down, not too important along the handle, it's, um, it's just a bit metal. Um, but where the trend is, uh, can't get my words out now, where the transition is between the handle and the core itself, you want to make sure you've gone around it a few times. You know, like I said earlier, not bulging out or nothing, but really pull it down tight and go around it several times to strengthen that, because otherwise, where that's joining, which is somewhere in here, it will just flop straight down and it will just be weak. Um, you could end up like damaging it once you've cracked it a few times or something, you know. So this is gonna get cracked a lot of times. So you need that to be nice and strong where that where that um, transitions from the handle to the core. Um, and then we've wrapped around the whole length, well, uh, the last foot of it. And that's basically uh, the core is done. Uh, just make sure that ends where you were uh, putting the BBs in. Make sure it's nice and uh, cleaned up. Just like trim the, the end off if it's frayed. Melt it down. Just literally just get your lighter and just singe the end of it. And I'm not going to say like you should be touching this because it does get hot if you melt it too much. But just you know, pat it down. Make sure it's all nice. And uh, let me see if I can zoom in or focus on it. Might be a little bit too. Yeah, you can see like all nice and nice and smooth on the end. Okay, but that is the that is the core done. And we're gonna now move on to cutting the the length of paracord for the first belly. This will have two inside bellies as such. We're gonna be plating the paracord and then there'll be a third layer on top which will be the you know the, the final outside layer. So I'm gonna Grab the black paracord for the first belly and we will we'll measure it out and cut some lengths. Okay, so for the first belly of this whip, we're going to need two 10 foot lengths of paracord, which we're going to pull the innards out of again and basically fold them in half so we'll have four five foot strands. We're not going to cut them though, just literally going to have the two 10 foots folded in half to start on the, the first belly and I'll show you how we do that in just a moment. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say just put all the innards out just uh, run your hand down the length of it see how it like curls up like that and then that will uh, pull it all out. Okay so uh, this is where um, we're going to start with the, the four plat first belly. Uh, this is where the vise really comes in handy. Um, obviously it was easier uh, wrapping up the, the core with the tape using the vise but this is where you're really going to need one. So if you've got some sort of a clamp you could use uh, that'll come in handy. Just anything to hold it still because you're going to need both hands to be platting this. But basically what you, what you want to do is uh, get your middle of your 10 foot length and basically just Put the middle end, middle of it here, with the the right side going over the left. Okay, so I say if we just pinch the middle of it together, put it over the back of it, and right over left. Okay, and then that is how those two strands are going to be. Then we want to grab our other piece. Again, find the middle of it. Loosen up the the bit you've just put on and basically we need to thread this bit through here till we've got the middle of it so I know I've completely lost the middle now but uh, it's alright we can find it easy so, so we just thread it through there hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm doing and we'll just pull it through till we've got the, the middle of this cord which is pretty much yeah, about there. Okay, so now we've got the middle of it through that little gap and tighten up the first one again. Now, obviously we've got three on this side, one on the other, we need to even this up. So the, the side that's still kind of on the right of this uh, bit where it went through, just flick over to the right hand side, okay and put it over there so now we've got two strands either side of each other okay now 
this is why it's called a four plat belly it's because there is going to be four strands surprise surprise and basically what we're going to do is you want to look at whatever the 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 lowest strand is where it's pointing and this one's pointing down that way so we want the opposite side at the top that's the one we're going to need to use next and basically it's going to go around the back and then it's going to go under the top one and over the bottom one okay now again see we've now got the bottom one is now pointing over to this side so I'm going to take the top one from there pull it around the back under and over okay and then just keep them snug as you're doing it you don't have to like yank it tight or nothing don't go don't go crazy but keep them nice and snug and and just carry on again so this one's now pointing up here so we want that one to come around the back we go under that one and then it'll pretty much naturally be over the next one anyway this is like obviously the easiest layer it's only four strands it's pretty simple you're just going to continue this pattern of pulling the the top strand around the back under and over and pull it through you're getting like a little bit of a habit of it so as you can see here you can literally just reach round with this finger pull it through to here and then just pull it through with your other hand okay again just uh, now and again just have a little um, shuffle up if it's getting a little bit loose or sloppy or anything you know just wiggle them about and again I'm going to use this finger just push it round with them I'm going to pull it through the middle there and pull it back over with that hand okay it's pretty simple to do with just the four strands uh, that method will be a little bit more complicated when we get onto the second belly and then when we're on the final outer layer which is going to have 12 strands that's going to be a bit more difficult but you know you'll figure out your own way of doing it little techniques rhythms but you can see now that we've done you know a few times this, this will take a while to get down the whole length and do it all you know this is a long process but you can see the plat starting to starting to show so um, I'm going to go ahead and carry on doing this so have a go at that and I'll come back to you in a second okay so I've now ran out of uh, cord uh, obviously you're not going to get down the whole length so don't worry if we're like only you know a couple foot down and you run out and you know it's supposed to happen this belly doesn't cover the entire length of the core uh, but you want to stop when you've got like I say about four inches left and get a little bit of electrical tape I'm just going to try to keep them nice and snug so they don't come undone while I get my tape and what we're going to do is literally just put them nice and snug again so obviously I let go and keep them fairly tight just put a bit of tape around it just to just to hold them in place for the next step because uh, I'm going to have to cut them down and trim them a little bit and we don't want them moving while we're doing that so basically what we've got here like I say we've got about maybe four inches maybe not that and Okay, so, so all we're going to do now is literally just tape up the entire length that we have just plaited, keeping this tape nice and tight so it looks very you know, snug right around the whole thing. Again, taking your time, just get it, get it done right. And then once we've gone down the whole length of it well the whole length of the handle 
and get to the transition point again and again like we did with the the core layer is we're going to strengthen it a bit more by going over it a few more times so yeah pretty simple not much to it but it just goes round and around and around okay there's another thing I forgot to mention earlier actually which uh, probably would have been handy I don't know if anybody's actually noticed yet is over here if you're using a vice uh, which I think most of you probably are it's a good idea to use a bit of wood to grip the whip and the handle or even on the plaid part if you haven't got any wood like oh, if you're using wood soft wood you know don't use hardwood but use a soft piece of wood or um, use a few sheets of cardboard folded over just anything to you know keep it held nice and tight but um, you know firm at the same time without damaging anything uh, you could use I don't know maybe a t-shirt or something an old t-shirt you got just cut up some rags out of it and grip it either side you know, just anything to protect the whip as you're doing it anyway we're now getting over to the, the transition point where you know where you've got like the you can see the floppiness of it so what we're going to do is go around this a few times again keep it nice and tight it's the main thing with this is to keep everything tight and snug as he says it he twists the tape okay so we're going to go around this covering the length of the transition onto the whip and then we're going to go back on ourselves a bit okay and just go up and down it a couple of times or uh, instead of going up and down too many times just instead of overlapping like just a little bit you know overlap quite a lot of the last layer you just put around you know, just so we can strengthen this because that's going to be the point where it's going to have a lot of force and also it's going to give it a bit more a bit more spring to it i guess that's not the right way of putting it you know that'll make it a bit more firm instead of just floppy and if it's got a bit more a bit more spring and a bit more bounce to it where the transition is that'll as you bring in a whip up to crack it it'll i guess put a bit more resistance on the force so as it goes back it will just help to flick the rest of the whip out you know yeah if it's all nice and floppy and just like a wet noodle it's not really going to do much you'll still be able to crack it just it won't be as good so I think should be enough on the transition there. You know, I can feel this quite firm because this I think the handle ends about here, so you can see now it's not drooping down quite so soon. Yeah, you know, it's got a bit more rigidity to it. So again, I'm just gonna carry on doing this all the way down the length we just plaited to where we taped up the ends and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so this is where we're at right now, is we have now got core is done, first belly is done, and all taped up. So it should look a little something like this. Um, so I've taped all the way over the, the length we plaited, and that is now where we're at. Next step to do is, uh, basically we've got to roll it out, uh, get it nice and even, because. You can pull it nice and tight and keep it nice and snug as you're plaiting it, but you know it's never going to be perfect just by doing that. So, what we're going to do is literally just get something hard on a nice smooth surface and roll this over. Obviously, bare hands ain't going to cut it. Normally, I do this like on the floor or something, like the floor of my shed is pretty smooth. Um, and then to roll it, you can use a book, a piece of hardwood or something, you know, just Something's not going to damage it, but you know, something nice and hard and flat. So I'm going to use my uh, subscribe plank, let's call it that for now. Uh, another little reminder to subscribe. Thank you. And literally all we're going to do is just start at the handle end and roll it backwards and forwards like that. Going along the whole length of it. 
you know, give it nice long strokes and just roll it all out until it gets all nice and smooth all the way along. Now this bit isn't ideal for doing it because of the, the sharp edges on it. So I'm going to go get a book and go over it. Um, but yeah, that's basically all you have to do for this side is um, you know, just go down the whole length, flatten it all out until you've got all the, the part we just plaited nice and smooth. And then after that it is on to belly number two. Okay, so for the next belly we're going to be doing an eight strand or eight plat belly. Um, so we're going to need four lengths of paracord. We've got two 14 foot, which I've already cut and pulled out the, the innards of them. Uh, so yeah, two 14 foot, a 10 foot and a 5 foot. And then what we're going to do with the, the two 14 foot ones is we're literally going to find the middle of them and once we've found the middle, instead of just like with the first belly, how we just kind of uh, folded it around the handle, uh, we're not going to do it on this one. We're just going to tie a knot right where the middle is. So what I'm going to do is just quickly whiz that through there. Not going to be perfect exactly in the middle, but you know as close to as you can. Just do a little overhand knot and then pull it as tight as you can. Nice and snug, because we're not going to undo the knot, that's just going to stay there, we'll end up chopping it off once we've finished this layer. Okay, so that's the, the middle of that one. Same with the, the second 14 foot strand. Just find the middle of that one. And then tie it off. Just like I say, just a simple quick little knot. Again, pull it nice and tight. That's two of them done. Now for the, the 10 and the five foot one, these strands, they're gonna end up dropping off part of the way through the length of this belly. They're not gonna go the whole way down. So just with like the uh, the first belly, how we staggered the last, well, the four strands at the end of it, this would be the same, but they're not gonna be staggered that close together because this is a bit more of an outer layer. There's more strands. So, I'm going to separate these about four inches. I've got a little mark on my on my workbench here, and then follow that down. So you can see they're staggered four inches. Follow it down, and where that is now essentially the middle point, just tie that in a knot right there to mark that. So then one side will be four inches longer than the other. And we're going to do the exact same thing. Pull it nice and tight, and then the same thing with the with the five foot length. Got one there, one there, four inches apart. Find the the middle point, so to speak. Tighten a knot, and then nice and tight again. So. Now if I fold that back over, you should see that yep, they are now a few inches apart. And now our four or eight strands is now ready to make the second belly. Okay, so now we're ready to do the second belly. I'm going to get you two 14 foot strands with the knots. Put the knots behind the handle. Do it about half inch to an inch down you know doesn't have to be above it or anything or right near the top not for now and then you're going to put the the left side on the handle and then the right side over it it's exactly the same as we did for the first layer but instead of doing it with one strand you're doing it with two okay so again like we did with the first layer I'm going to give it a bit of slack so now we've got a gap to put the other strands through now, since we've already started with the two 14 foot, we're going to put the, the 10 foot through. Pull that until you get the knot. Now this knot can stay this side of the of the handle. It's not really too important. And then you're going to stick the 5 foot strand through. 
this is going to get a little bit fiddly, not going to lie, but uh, it's alright, just take your time. Now once the five foot one's through, again to the knot, get them you know, pretty much level with each other, just pull that, you know, the first two 14 foot strands a little bit snug, and then just tidy it up a little bit. So we have now got four strands either side. Okay, then I'm back now after changing onto another memory card. Didn't realise that one was getting so full. But anyway, so we were at this point here with the two 14 strands with the knots behind. We've put the 10 and then the 5 on top. Okay, so hopefully you can make that out that the, the bottom one's the 10, top one's the 5. And we've pulled them nice and snug. Got four strands this side four strands the other side and this is basically going to be exactly the same principle as the first belly was where you look at your bottom strand is pointing to the right so we're going to take the right hand one now instead of going under one over one because we've now doubled the amount of strands we're going to double the amount we go under and over so we're going to go under two and over two all right and then we do the same with the other side. Now that this is now pointing to the left, bring it round, and we're going to go under two, over two, and you're going to repeat that just the same as you did for the first layer. Under two and over two. Okay. And then back to the left side, under two, over two. Right, so I'm just going to go down and do that for a little bit and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I've come to the point now where I'm going to have to effectively lose one of these strands. Um, so all we're going to do is now that it's going to be the next strand that gets uh, gets woven or plaited, um, do like you normally would, uh, bring it round behind the back, under two, over two. And then we're kind of gonna just forget about it. It's there. Just gonna kind of like leave it, leave it tucked down there. So now we're gonna be left with three on one side and four on the other. And some of you might get it straight away. Some might find it confusing, but it's not really too difficult or anything. It's just you just kind of carry on as you were, just forgetting about this one. So anyway, what we're gonna do is because uh, this right side is now the next one, but there's only three. You still bring it round the back. And you still go under two, but now there's only one for it to go over. So you still do the first part of it, under two, and then over the next one. So just forget the fact that it's only going to be one you're going over, not two. This side will still be under two, over two, because we've still got four there until we drop that one in a few more inches time. So if you remember when we did that, the five foot one, it was uh, staggered by four inches. So again, we're now going to go back to the other side. Again, this side is still four strands, so we're still doing under two, over two. But that one, we still got to kind of forget that it's there and just leave it down the middle. And then in a moment, we're going to we're gonna trim it down because you don't want to have it like under here for too long because there's no point in having it. It's just going to be bulkiness underneath there. And um, yeah, just I don't know if it will really affect the performance of the whip much or not, but um, yeah, we don't really want it just sitting there. But anyway, so now we have to go back to the other side again. And like we did a moment ago, it's gonna go under two as normal, but over one. Okay. And in a moment you'll see that you'll you know you'll kind of lose sight of this one. And then once it's tucked in a bit more with a few more around it, you know, keep keep pulling them tight, you know, keep it nice and snug. It's gonna be a bit more tricky to start with with trying to keep that one in there. And um, yeah, once we've gone over it a few times, we'll then trim it down. I suppose you could just uh, get a tiny, tiny little bit of electrical tape, go around that one bit, and I'll keep it there. And then uh, when it comes to trim it off, you know, you just if I, if I was to put a bit of tape there now, you know, go around it a few times and then just trim that one down. You know, in fact, we might actually do that because that's not gonna. 
affect the whip much and that will just make it a bit easier to keep this one in there if I go like that okay so that is now nice and snug and tight there and I wonder is if I pull them behind get my knife wherever I put it and then just nick that off there we go and then we just pull these other ones snug again because obviously letting go of them a bit they went a bit loose But there we have it, we're now back to doing under two over one on that side and then under two over two there pull them nice and tight that's the most important thing with doing this is keep pulling them tight you keep these things nice and snug you can see that's formed quite a nice tight uh, pattern right there I think it's called the herringbone pattern if I remember I think that's what it was I'll have to look it up in a minute because I honestly for the life of me can't remember but I'm pretty sure that's it but yeah that is um, that's basically it it's not really that hard i say you just gotta tuck that strand in the shortest one when you've only got a few inches left and just forget about it nothing much to it i say then don't worry about going two, one, two, on whichever way around. Just think under two, and then over, like you would have done. Just forget there's only one there instead of two. And then, in a moment, I'll have to do this next one. And that's basically it. You just carry on, do that, and then you'll have the ten foot one. When you get to the the first side of that, you'll have to just drop one down, then drop the other one. And you'll be left with four strands. Okay, and I'll let you guys carry on. And I'll come back to you in just a moment. Okay, so we've continued down doing the under two over one on both sides. We're now ready to drop the next strand, which would be one of the ones from the 10 foot. It's the first one, and then obviously we've got the next one to be a few more inches down. Uh, but we've literally, we've just plaited it over, and it's now on the bottom. Of one of the sides so yours might be your right side yours might be the left side just depends which way around you put your strand when you started but so when you've got like this short little bit do the same thing again I'm going to use that bit of tape like we did for the other ones because that actually worked quite easy to hold it in place it's not something I used to do but it does make life a little bit easier for holding it and stopping it from getting in the way or coming undone if I can get it to stay in a straight line, it'll be good instead of wrapping around. There we go. Alright. That's on there nice and tight. Trim that little bit off. We don't want that excess on there. Just trying to be very careful not to slip and nick the any of the other strands. Okay, so anyway. We are now left with two strands this side, still three on this side. I'm just going to do the same thing as we did with the other ones, is just ignore the one that is now tucked in there. So that's the one I just plaited. It's pointing up to the left, so that means we've got to do the left hand side next. Now, obviously, we're not going to carry on doing under two and then over none, because that would just be silly. We've got under one, over one. Okay? And then with this side, we're still going to continue around with under two over two. Uh, under two over one, sorry. Helpful, I knew what I was talking about. All right, and then back to the other side, we're going to go under one over one, just like we did with the, the four plat on the first belly. Okay, and then back to the other side is going to be under two and over one still and then just continue along under one over one that's all you can really do with two strands the other side under two over one so there's not really much to it 
you literally just obviously keep them tight you know don't forget that keep pulling them nice and snug keep a good grip on them but it's really not too complicated if you're not sure if you get lost just um, hang on a minute there's me saying if you're not sure I'll get lost and I went and did the wrong side <laughs> okay under two over one yeah you can uh, at least you can take your time with it pause the video and like, just watch that bit back again if you're not sure and then just am I doing it again? yeah I did it again I can't multitask you see there we go so I'm talking, got to get back in the rhythm of it I have to think about it just then as well I'm trying to do this quick so that I can just do this next strand without having to stop and start the video again and then I can just quickly show you dropping off the other one which means we will then be down to a four strand plait and we'll be doing under one over one on both sides and we will do that until the four strands run out again like on that first belly you just literally carry on under one over one until you're pretty much out okay so I've continued down with the four strands we had left doing under one over one and now I'm about to start running out um, I've got this one strand here and this one here this one and this one now I can't really well I suppose I could plait this one over a little bit more but it's not going to be much point in doing a lot more because there's only a tiny bit sticking out there and yeah I can do that so what I'm going to do now is we're going to start doing like we did on the inner layer on the first belly and um, we're literally just going to have these tucked down along there, staggered of various lengths um, and then just tape around them this is exactly the same as what we just did on that first belly um, nothing, nothing special to this one still just a, another belly but obviously still keep it nice and tight I think I've probably said it a hundred times already so let's get the tape on there just to stop anything coming undone and then find your shortest one and that one can be there actually I'm just going to trim a little bit off because there's not really much between that one and the next one. Oh, I can't do that <laughs> I swear this knife can actually cut. <laughs> this is the way I was holding stuff. There you go. This doesn't make it very easy. I know we're making excuses. But anyway, so we've got one strand there. There's another one. Where am I going to cut the other ones? Uh, we'll keep that one as the longest and we'll just trim this one down a little bit. Just careful. Yeah, there we go okay so we've got one two three four and I'm just going to start taping around and let's like, so keep them like we did in the other belly like staggered around the core you know don't let them bunch up on one side so otherwise that will uh, make an uneven whip hinder the performance a little bit every little detail counts you know make it as best as you can each each part each little detail all add up you know you think oh that bit won't matter so much and that bit won't matter and before you know you've got loads of little things and stop that whip from being the best whip you've ever made I'm not saying any of mine are any better than anyone else's there are definitely far better whip makers on this planet especially I've seen some guys making uh, leather whips and they're absolutely beautiful there's a guy actually one of the first guys I watched on YouTube 
I think it was Bernie something. I'll look him up. I'll try to put a link in the description for his channel. See, he's, um, he's making them with leather. He literally just sided out with one big sheet of leather and stripped the whole thing down into a leather lace. And yeah, he had a calculation for working out like the thickness of the each strand and. It's quite impressive, like obviously he had a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. So anyway, that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to carry on waffling on now. I'll just go tape up that and then we will go back to this end and tape going down the whole length of it like we did for the first belly and then roll it out. Okay, so if you're up to where I am, finish off taping up them odd strands from the belly go along the whole length of it, tape it all up and then roll it out and then we'll be on to the last layer. Okay so now that we've got the second belly all done and out of the way um, we're now going to move on to the third and final layer which will be a 12 plat uh, layer and we're going to be using the lovely aquamarine colour that I accidentally ordered uh, so this is either going to look good or bad but either way it will still crack and it'll still be a good whip um, so anyway, for this layer we need six lengths of paracord. It'll be two 20 foot lengths, a 19 foot, a 14, an 8 and a 5. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those and take all the cores out and I'll come back and uh, we'll get started on the last layer. Okay, so now that we've got all of those cut and cored, we're going to take the middle of them, time it a knot on the three longest lengths just bang in the middle and then the three that are left over the 14 the 8 and the 5 you're going to stagger them with four inches difference either side like we did for the other layer because uh, that make it easier for for tapering when we drop them off so anyway you're going to take your three longest lengths the ones that are knotted evenly in half and put the three knots behind your handle and then left side round and right side over the top and then just pull your cords surrounding out of the way right so you should have something looks like this try to keep the knots at the back keep them on a rock and feel them at the back there and then we've got to get the other three strands in so all we do is we'll just make a little loop in there make sure there's enough room now I've got the other three strands just hanging around my neck. Doesn't matter what order you put these in. Because we're platting them, you're just going to drop them off anyway. They'll just be lost in the mix, you know. So we put number one in. And then I can find the end of number two. Yeah, man. Number two goes in. Don't worry about pulling them up to the knot just yet, it'll be easier once you've uh, pulled them other three tight just to get these in the right position. So just get that out of the way. And then number three, like I say it doesn't matter what order these go in, just, uh, just get them in there and get them put out of the way for a second. Alright, so now we can pull them first three snug. Don't yank them too tight yet because you still got to pull the other three through. And we'll just pull them through one at a time, find the knot. So there was the five foot one. Next one. Which hopefully be coming up. There you go, there's the second knot. And a third one. Right there. Okay. Now we're just giving them a quick straighten out. Again, make sure the three knots for them first three longest are all at the back. Try to keep them nice and neat in a row and then the three knots for these front ones are all right here and then keep the knots as close as you can to the end of the handle for this layer because we're going to end up cutting them off at the end and that is basically it we're now pretty much we get these around here ready to start platting this layer I'll get these all straightened out, I'm getting bunched up around me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're not going to do a uh, the herringbone pattern all the way down. 
what we're going to do for the handle, we're going to do a, a different plaque. It just looks a little bit better. Separates the handle from the rest of the whip. Uh, we're going to do a diamond pan. Okay, I got a new battery in the camera after that just died, just as I started this layer. That was a good start. Um, right, so anyway, where was I? Uh, we've now got all the strands on the on the handle. We've got the three longest ones with the knot behind, three shortest tucked in with the knot in front. And we're going to do a diamond pattern for the for the handle, which will then change back into the, the same pattern we did for the, the other layers, which would be the herringbone. That will go over the the main body of the whip but for the handle like I said we're going to do this diamond pattern there's a couple ways you could do it and um, we're going to do a two strand diamond pattern you could do it with just one and it would be very fine like loads of little diamonds going all the way down but this one will be a two strand diamond pattern so the diamonds will be a little bit bigger a bit more prominent so it's going to be the same principle as the other layers use your your bottom strand as a indicator as to which side you got to start so mine's pointing to the top right so we take the top right two strands because we're going to do a, a two strand pan and we're going to bring them around the back like you did with the other layers and then they're going to go over two under two and over two okay this will be a bit more tricky because you've got more strands to plait more to go around and, but you'll get in a swing of it getting a little rhythm but just keep them nice and neat and tidy as you're going along and make it so much easier instead of trying to fix them all or you know, lose track of what's where but just keep them nice and straight pull tight keep adjusting after every every plait if you want it doesn't really matter as long as they're you know, even and tight okay so the next thing you want to do is now that's pointing to the top left, take the top two on the left and go around the other side and you go over two, under two and over two and pull them through like that now I'm making a bit of a mess of this because I'm trying to talk while I'm doing it as I said before, I'm not very good at multitasking while doing this. Okay. Yeah, I'll just make sure these are all nice and snug. Try to keep them in the, the right order as well. Because you've got more strands here, it's going to be easier to lose them. Just remember these top two, middle two, bottom two. Once you get going, it'll be a little bit easier without these knots at the top here getting in the way. And anyway, we're now onto the, the right side again. So again, two come around the other side. Over two, under two, and over two. Pull them all the way through. It's a bit easier once you get further down the whip and you've got less cord to pull through. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six. Right. So I'll just do a couple more on the camera, so you can see it start to take shape, and then I'll uh, I'll just whiz down the handle, and then I'll come back to it once we are ready to transition from the diamond to the herringbone. So now we're pointing to the top left. Take the two on the left, around the back, uh, over two, under two, and over two. Okay, pull them through. Just take your time while doing it. It'll make it a lot easier for keeping them straight. I don't know if you can see here on the camera, but those top two on the right side have got twisted over each other there. But if you catch these things before you carry on too much, it won't cause you any any issues. There we go. Okay, so those ones pulled nice and tight out of the way. Alright, back onto the right. Top two, round the back. If you want, you can just pull them 
both round first before you grab the other strands, just whatever makes it easier for you. Go over two, under two, over two. Sometimes I'll separate the strands that I'm plaiting through before I grab them around the back. Sometimes I'll grab them around the back first. It's whatever I find easiest. All right, so you can start to see a diamond plait taking shape. It might not be so easy for you guys with the camera. It's the crazy colours of this thing, but once I get down the, the handle, I'll show a close-up of it, and you can see how this one looks. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to go and whiz down the handle and get all of that plaited, and then I'll come back to you in just a second. Okay, so I've finished plaiting down the length of the handle with the diamond pattern, and what we're going to do now is transfer over to the herringbone pattern for the rest of the whip. You want to leave it a couple of inches before where your transition point is, which for me is around about here. Um, first thing you want to do before you transition over is, as hopefully you've been doing through the length of the handle, just pull everything nice and tight. Make sure you've got no little uh, twists in it, or none of the strands have like overlapped each other. I did have one where luckily I caught it quite soon where two of the strands had twisted over as I've been plaiting them so I had to go back and untwist them which uh, if you want to get a little tool to make life a bit easier one of these a little uh, plaiting needle you can get them on eBay and Amazon and that it's just a little brass needle with a very blunt point on the end and it's got a threaded insert on the other side you can do some fancy plaiting through the handle with these you just thread the the paracord onto it. Actually we are going to be using one for doing the, the fall of the whip at the end but you can use them for many things but this makes it a bit easier just to get in and like get yourself a bit of leverage in there and undo some twists and stuff. Anyway I'm waffling on now so let's carry on with, uh, with making a whip. Which all we're going to do is follow the rule of your bottom strand pointing to whatever side so this one's pointing to the left. We were taking two strands we're now literally just going to take one and we're going to go around the back and you're going to go under three and over three and this will be a lot easier than doing that diamond pan. I mean you can do this down the length of the handle if you want just do the under three over three for the whole length of the handle and whip but it's nice to have a different pan. and we're then going to go to the right hand side now it's pointing to the right take the top one strand and we're going to Go under three and over three. And you're literally just going to carry on that pattern. We now take the top strand on the left, under three, over three. Keeping them nice and tight and straight. On the right hand side, under three, over three. And you will find this is definitely much easier to, uh, to keep everything flat and stop and twisting. Just make sure you keep bunching them up, pulling them nice and tight. On the left hand side, under three, over three. And then the right, under three, over three. You see this is a lot quicker and easier to do. I don't know if you can really see, like I said, with this uh, with this pattern I've got on this cord. I don't know if you can really see the the shape of the platen. But that's basically it. We've now transitioned from the diamond pattern to the herringbone, and where we've transitioned from it, this point here, that will get covered up with a little fancy knot at the end of making this whip. It's one of the last things to do. I'm going to be putting a knot over that transition and we'll put one at the end of the handle to cover up the messiness and that that we will have at the end there. Yeah, that's it. Just uh, keep pulling them nice and tight. I'm going to carry on with this until I'm ready to drop a strand and then I'll come back to you there. Okay, so I'm now ready to drop a strand. Like, I could go on a little bit further maybe, but then there would only be like a tiny bit left and it would just be a little bit more awkward, so I'm going to go ahead and drop it now. Same principle as what we did with the other ones. 
uh, on the previous layers is we're just going to forget that it's there basically. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just get a tiny little bit of tape just to hold it in place. And I'm going to just stick that right about there, making sure it's still tight. And then that will stay there and we're literally just going to forget about it. So uh, next, next one to do is going to be on that side. So we're still going to take the top left one, bring it round, under three and then over two because we're forgetting that this one's here. Okay, so we've got under three over two on that side. And then back to the right side bring it round the back and we're still going to do under three over three because we still have three strands on that side because we've only dropped one strand okay and then back to the other side we're going to do under three over two and then this side under three over three and then under three over two and then in a moment you'll see that strand will completely like disappear. You won't even notice it in the in the pattern that it's gone. Okay, under three over three, and then under three over two. Bring this one round. Did he grab the wrong side? Under three over three. Just keep them nice and tight as you're doing it. What I usually do is keep them tight while you're going along, but then once I've done a few of them, I then stop and just pull them down one at a time, starting at the top, just to make sure that everything is as nice and snug as it can be. Okay, that one over th under three over two, under three over three, and I do keep repeating this in my head as I'm doing this like when I'm not recording just keep going under three over two and then back around the other side under three over three now oop, nearly grabbed the the forgotten strand and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim off that little little bit of excess right there just because we don't need it. See if I can actually cut it today with my lovely shiny but not so sharp knife. There we go. And that is now forgotten about. And like I said, we're just going to pull down on each of these, starting at the top on one side. Three, four, Five and the other side one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's it, that's how you drop a strand with this many. Now I am now ready to start dropping this one as well. So what I'm gonna head go there. Yeah. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is forget about that one. And um, then just gonna stick there. Uh, I'm getting all my words muddled up now. We're gonna stick to under three over two on both sides. So again, I'm just gonna grab a tiny bit of tape to get rid of that one. You can have like a few bits of tape like already cut off and just stuck on the side somewhere if you've got somewhere clean to put them. Make it a bit easier than doing it how I'm doing it. So I could probably keep this one going a bit long, but I think it'll be fine if I just get this out of the way right now all right so there we go now down to five strands on both sides so we go under three over two on that side and under three over two on the other side okay so we're ready to drop off another strand I'm just going to tighten these down a little bit already got it 
taped down onto the onto the body of the whip there. So literally what we're going to do now is go around the back of that one that it's pointing to. It's going to be under two over two on that side. Now there's only four strands. And then this side will carry on being under three over two. And if we keep doing this, you'll see like with the other strands, that one will just disappear, which is what we want. We want it to disappear and then no one even knows it's there. And then once we've uh, done this a few times, we should be nearly ready for the next strand to go. There's only a few inches difference. You can just keep tugging them nice and tight. Okay, we're now ready to drop the next strand. So we've got it stuck down already. We're now going to have four strands either side. So that means we're going to be doing under two and over two on both sides now. And seeing as the strands we've got left should be, what was it, the 220s, a 19 and a 14 foot. And that last one was the 8 foot. So that means we should have several foot left to go before we have to drop another strand. So we're going to just continue doing under 2, over 2 on both sides for quite a while at the moment. And then uh, we drop down to seven strands and then six. And then it won't be long before we've uh, finished plaiting this. Okay, and after doing several foot of the under two over two, we're now ready to drop down another strand off the off this plat. It's uh, getting nearly towards the home straight now. It won't take long to finish off the platen after we drop down to just six strands and then uh, then it'll be down to the final four. So you're only gonna have four strands going right down to the end. This is a couple more foot left to do. But again, uh, same principle as always, just forget that one's even there. So whenever you've got an odd number, you're gonna do under like the majority of it so if you've got three it's going to be two and one if there's five it's going to be three and two you know it'll be one more on the the first part of it and then one less on the other you know so anyway we're going to go under two and over one on that side and then carry on with the under two over two on the other side and then under two over one under two, over two. Simple. Under two, over one. Under two, over two. And I'll just do that until we get to this next thread. Okay, and we're ready to drop down to just three strands either side. So again, just tucked it in the middle there, taped it down. We're going to go under two, over one. On both sides of the whip now and we'll continue that pattern down so we need to drop another strand and then yeah now it's uh really won't be long till this is all done okay so it's time to yet again as you guessed it drop another strand so i've stuck it down here used as little as possible in the, with the tape so we're getting towards the end here so we want like um as little as possible on the inside, we don't want anything restricting the flow of the crack. Um, so now just going to go around with a under one over one on that side because there's really nothing else you can do with two strands. And then keep doing the under two over one on the other side until we drop down to the last four strands which as you can see won't be long. Actually I'm just going to trim the end of that other strand off because there's really not much gap in these ones so I don't want them dropping off too close together otherwise the taper won't be quite as smooth 
right, now my strands are all messed up. Right, there we go. So, under one, over one. Under two, over one. All right, and now it's time to drop the last strand that we are going to drop. The other four are going to continue to the end of the whip. Uh, all we've got left is two either side, so it's just going to be under one, over one on both sides till we get to the end. And you want to stop when you've got uh, probably about three or four inches left on uh, the shortest strand. Okay, so we're down to the last few inches on our shortest strand there, so what I'm going to do now is we're just going to pause what we're doing with this because before we go on to the next step, and yeah, I'm just going to bind these up at the back there with just a little bit of tape. We can take that off after, just to stop them coming undone. Uh, we've got to make what's called the full of the whip, which is basically going to be another length of cord, which we kind of thread through itself, which I'll show you in just a second how we do it, and it loops on here. We then tie the strands around that and the core, tie it all off, and then the full will just be basically a, a single strand of cord, but with another layer inside. That will then be the joining part of from the whip to the cracker at the end. So we've just got two more pieces left to put on this and then we'll be all done. Okay, so for the full, what you're gonna need is a four foot length of cord. Um, take the core out again. And what you're gonna have to do is find the middle of it the middle point right there and what we're going to do is basically we're going to thread the end of this onto the the platting needle or threading needle whatever you want to call it I'll try to find a link for it and put it in the description only a few pounds or something and um, basically we're going to thread the cord into the, the middle of it and then we're going to run the cord through itself and it's going to basically be inside the other end of it, if that makes sense. So, what we need is just melt down the end of one, one part of it. Otherwise, if it's just frayed, it's not going to go in very easy. But all you do is you just poke it in the end of the needle and just thread it in. It's got like a a screw fitting sort of thing on the inside, a threaded inside. So anyway, like I say, we're just going to find the middle point here, which is about there, and then you got to just work it in to the inside of the cord, which just with a bit of persuasion it goes in, and then thread it through and that's basically it just takes a little bit of work in to get it through the other side a little bit fiddly but it doesn't take long just push it down okay. it's probably easier ways of doing this than what I'm doing it but there is other ways of making a fall without one of these needles uh, you can just uh, basically get like a two foot, let's say you want the fall to be about two foot, so if we say a two foot four inches or something like that, uh, you can literally just put it on the end of your your whip. Don't pull the core out, but just uh, put it on the end of your whip and just basically n knot it on, just tie it on. But anyway, there we go, so needles come through the other side, just pull it down. And then if I do that, you'll see that we now have a little loop on the end there. And that bit is basically going to go over the end of the whip. I'm going to pull it down tight and tie the end of the whip. Like all them other them four threads are going to basically tie around this and hold it on and stop it from coming off. But what we want to do for now is unthread the needle. Then we want to put this over the whip, 
Let me just move the camera so you guys can see. Literally just going to put everything through that little hole we just made right there. Like so. Strain it out a little bit so it's nice and tidy. And then just pull down on it. Make it nice and snug on the end there. And then once we've tied the, the threads around this, or the strands around it, that's not going to come off at all. But you do want it to be on there, you know, nice and tight. Okay. And once we've got it on there, let me just show you what we're going to do with the end. Get my knife. Just trim the end down. Just so you got both of them are basically going to be nice and flat, flush with each other. And then we're just going to melt the two together and fuse them so they ain't going to move. Alright, and that's how we do the fall. So be careful with that because once you do melt them together that is pretty hot, obviously. Now what's left is to tie this on. Alright, so this next part where we're going to tie the fall on, this is a little bit tricky and fiddly, but um, just take your time with it, it'll be alright. I'll try to show you as best as I can on my camera. Now basically we've got the fall, it's tied on here, we'll keep that at the back, hanging down. Here's your core, and your four strands. Now what we're going to do is have all four of these strands, make sure they are all as tight as you can get them, and keep them held tight. Have the full, you can have it a little bit backed up, you don't really need it too close right now. Keep it out of the way a little bit, might make it a bit easier for you. But basically you want to try to have all four of these strands. We're going to tie each one around the whole lot basically. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my shortest strand. That one's an inch or two shorter than the others. I must have tied the knot a little bit off centre when I did that one. But ideally, if you did it right, all four of these should be about the same length. But anyway, so we've got all these other three strands in your core all together. This one, on the left hand side, go to the left, round the back of the fall as well. So you basically encompass the whole, everything, the fall, the other strands, everything. It's going to come round. So you've looped around the whole thing and then tuck it through that little loop there. Okay. Now if you can, try to like fold the that strand over just a little bit, do like a little half turn on it. And that'll help it sort of like turn 90 degrees. And then instead of like trying to stick out to the side there, it will come towards the end of the whip. It's not very easy to get this one to stay because I think because it's so short I can't really turn it too well. But I think once I get the others around it, it will stay put. If you keep it a little bit tight, it'll be alright. Okay. So that's that one. Then move on to your next strand. Always leave the longest one till last. So again, this next one, I think we'll go for... This one right here. Again, we're going to go to the left, around everything. And these knots are basically going to be in a row, like one, two, three, four. So once that knot's there, you don't want to go behind that knot. It's got to be towards the end of the whip on that side of the knot. So it's gone around the left, loop around and back through itself. And pull it down towards the end of the whip. Again, give like a little half turn to fold it over if you can. 
bit easier with like I think leather strands if you're doing a leather whip probably because those are flatter you know this is like it's a paracord obviously a tubular sort of thing anyway pull that down again making sure that first one doesn't come undone just keep it snug now I have to go crazy tight right now because we're gonna pull them all down on each other in a minute next strand again go to the left around the back poke through itself and then give it a little twist there just to help it go through keep them all nice and snug yeah very fiddly I don't like fiddly stuff really it's probably the wrong sort of hobby for me to have but there's that and now we just got the last one to do again it's going to go around the back make sure you're still going around the fall and everything else way over I don't know how well easy you can see this on there through itself and then pull it down I think I did that a little bit wrong there there it go okay there we go that's better kind of looped it around a little bit too much alright so there we go that's a bit better pull it down snug and try to twist this one over alright now then now we've got all of them tied off give them a little tug just to tighten up you can see now each knot's in a row probably be easier for you to see on your own whip as you're doing it <laughs> these colours aren't particularly easy for demonstrating so anyway give them a little tug just keep it snug so when you let go of them it doesn't go anywhere and then pull your fall down Get, pull on the actual strand and just try to loop that snug up towards the first knot there so that is not going to go anywhere I mean now that that's all tied up when you crack that nothing's going to happen it's not going to come off so what we want to do if you've got some pliers make this a lot easier for you especially if you've got a short strand like this one grab hold with the pliers and then just give that a real good pull and tighten it you're not going to break it or if you've got it in a vise and you've not got it gripped too much and you've got, I like to grab hold with my hand I don't like squeezing too much with the vise you know, I don't want to squash the, the whip too much that's two and then try to when you pull them don't don't let the knots slide up you don't want to make them uneven hold on to the knot if you have to as you do it that's number three and number four that knot's kind of slid around a little bit There it is. Alright, and then what we're going to do with this fourth one is we pull it tight. Another little thing you can do is to uh, basically thread it back through the other ones. just to kind of lock it all in place sort of thing all right we just thread that one there and if you've got plenty of uh, thread left this will be a lot easier but basically don't go through itself but go through the next 
three strands. Now I know obviously we'll just tighten these right down, so take some wiggling. We can pull them tight again once we've done this. I can hear some birds scurrying around on the roof of the shed. But just wiggle it through. Yeah, the three strands. At least you know these are definitely nice and tight. There we go. And pull that through. Okay. And all we'll do is we'll re tighten them other first three strands. And then with that last one thread it back through itself. None of that will come undone. So we can just give that a little tug just to make sure it's in there. All I'm going to do is just trim off the end of that one. Just leave a little bit sticking out. I'm going to tidy them up because we don't want that fraying off. Okay, so that one. Now, next bit is you want to trim off these other strands that are left, the other three there, and uh, the rest of your core, but do not cut the fall off, obviously. You have to do all that over again, and it's not going to be particularly easy. Um, yeah, that's basically it now. We've just got to stick the cracker on once we've trimmed these off. What I'm going to do it actually is I'm going to undo the vise, do this on the bench, all right so now they're all, oh, the whip's getting caught up there, just readjust a little, there we go. So you can see the end Oh, forget this. In the camera would help. Focus. Focus. There we go. So all of these are now trimmed off, full, nice and safe. And we're just gonna melt the individual ends. You don't have to like melt them together or nothing, just stop the ends from fraying, tidy it all up a little bit. And that is it. We are now ready to make a cracker and stick it onto the end of the the fall. Okay, so we're now ready to make a cracker for the whip. And best thing to use, which you're going to have plenty of, is one of the strands from the inside of the whip. Um, if you take the one of the strands out of the the fall that you just made. You've got seven strands right there, all about four foot long. And what you want to do is fold it in half and stick the two ends of it where they meet together. Stick them in your vise with this end. I've got mine clamped in a bit of wood. You don't need the wood, but the end of my vise doesn't quite uh, meet together. It's quite an old one. So anyway, uh, get your two ends in there so you should have the, the end that's looped over on this side. Stick a pencil through it. And then basically, you're just going to twiddle this round and around and around and around and around and around god knows how many times i've never really counted how many but just keep going at it until you've got quite a few twists in there and then what we're going to do is put this end to the other end fold it in half and when we take it out of the vise it'll all twiddle together and um, we'll tie it off in a knot and that will be the cracker I hate doing this bit. What I've been thinking of doing is trying it with a drill. Pinching the end here into the like the chuck of a handheld drill and just spinning it around. Which I can't see any reason why it wouldn't work to be honest. But just keep twiddling. Twiddling, twiddling. And this will obviously will get shorter as you're spinning it. Or you can do if you haven't got a vice. Which, if you've made all of this whip and you haven't used a vice and it comes out alright, well done to you. Um, 
But what you can do is what I used to do is uh, the ends that I've put in the vise, I used to just literally get my shoe on and just stand on the two ends. And then I'd have the, the end of the twine coming up and I'd just be spinning it that way around. All right, so I think this should be twiddled enough. And you see as I loosen off the slack, you can see it like spinning itself together there. That's basically what's gonna happen when I take it out the take out the vise. So what we wanna do is get it around to the other side, like so. You can undo your vise now drop the bits of wood on the floor. Now obviously try not to let go of it and let it un undo but as you can see it's now all spun together. I try to zoom in. Alright and focus a little bit. There we go. You can see that's all like spun itself around. Literally all I'm going to do just tie that and then just like a little overhand knot and there we have it there is one cracker if I can get this in and view the camera Oh, and then one more thing I like to do Now one more thing I like to do when I do it that way is to where I had it folded over you had a little loop on the end where you've tied the knot basically just to cut the ends off or trim them all together just like it was with the uh, the last few strands of the whip now I'm going to show you how we tie this on. Okay, so now we need to tie this cracker on to the end of the fall. So what you need to do first, which if you spun this around like loads when you was twisting it, be a little bit more tricky, but what you gotta do is open up the end. So you keep trying to twist back on itself. Open up the end of your cracker and thread the fall through. And then just tug down a little bit, make sure it's not all bunched up or anything, all nice and neat. Now, it's very simple to tie this on. If you try to copy how I've got it. Basically you wanna do like a little U shape. Go under the fall, like so. So it's going around here, under the fall, go over. And through itself like that, pull it down and slide that knot up. And if you pull tight, where you've melted the end of the fall, there it's going to be like a little lump. And if you pull tight on that, that's not going to come off of there because you've basically just tied a knot around the thin part, it's got its thicker bulge at the end there, and it shouldn't come off. You could do another knot if you wanted to, do it again, but to be honest you just make another extra lumpy bit you don't really need. As long as you've got that pulled real tight on the end of the fall, so that is not going to go anywhere. And that is basically your whip is now finished, it's ready to, to use and to crack and do what you want. Uh, but what we are going to do is, before I go out and do that, I'm going to roll it again like we did with the first couple of layers. It's very important to do it on the third one actually, just to even out all your, your platting. Make sure this is all nice and neat. Just roll all of this with your bit of wood or whatever you were using, a book. And uh, yeah, get everything all nice and tidy. But before I go out and crack this, um, we are going to do one more thing. Well, two more technically, uh, which you don't have to do. You can still use this whip. Is I'm going to make a 
the knot that is going to go around here which is going to cover up where we transition from that diamond plat to the herringbone that is basically where the whip's going to start bending just to tidy that up and I'm going to put a knot around this end um, what you can do um, is cut these knots where you plaited it and then you just tape around it get loads of you can get some of this twine that we've got from the inside of the cord wrap around loads of times and then go around with some electrical tape to hold everything in or you could do is just tape it all up first go like a couple inches on tape around as much as you can and then just cut this end of it off so you're literally just gonna cut the ends of the knots there but basically whatever you want to do to tidy up this end get that all nice and flat so either just cut the knots and tape them down because you're going to cover it all up with uh, with a, a knot anyway and then uh, yeah that's basically it that is the, that's the whip finish but I'll show you how to do these knots that we're going to use to cover up and it's also nice to use a different colour as well just to break it up a little bit and seeing as mine is a very uh, what should we say unique colour I'm going to use some black just put around here and here just to you know, break up that colour a little bit what I could have done is use some black and this on the outside on this last layer so I could have had like a stripe of the colour going down the length of the whip one way and then you know, 90 degrees would have been uh, black so it would have been like aquamarine colour then black and, you know so on and so on but yeah let's it's enough talk let's go on with these two knots so we can get this finished and go give it a crack okay so there we have the finished whip um, I was going to show on camera how I did the knots on the end here and the one between the, the handle and the rest of the whip um, I forgot how long it takes me to do them so maybe I'll do a, a separate video to that another day um, it's not like crazy difficult to do these knots but it's long winded now if that makes sense you, know, you gotta be careful like concentrate on what you're doing like knotting it going over and under and wrapping around it so it takes a bit of time uh, probably a good 45 minutes just to do one knot more or less depending on how quick and easy you want to do it or if you want to take your time and make it nice and you know look good these ones yeah I think it's a little bit quicker and easier to do the knot over here because you haven't got to go over the end of the handle but uh, still about the same amount of time yeah so there we have it I'm going to go take it outside now and give it a crack still not 100% sure on this colour but it doesn't look quite so bad up close you can see all the you can still see all the pattern to it like where we've uh, done the hair and bone and that and I'm trying to keep this in focus it's not very easy um, but yeah I think it turned out all right. It's still a good whip, whether the colour's that grey or not. And um, hopefully it cracks just as good as uh, I think it should.